types of nuclear radiation, and writing nuclear equations. Okay, so before we get started talking about nuclear chemistry, we're going to remind ourselves of the basic structure of the atom. So here's just a picture showing us what we have seen before. And you can see here is the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. And so we're going to be talking about changes within the nucleus in this section. And we also have electrons as an electron cloud around the nucleus. Just also to remind you that protons and neutrons have similar mass. Protons are in the nucleus with a plus one charge. Neutrons are in the nucleus and they don't have a charge. And then the electrons, again, are in a cloud around the nucleus and they have a minus one charge. All atoms of all elements are composed of electrons, protons, and with only one exception, being hydrogen, neutrons. Reminding ourselves also that, let's say we have an atom of the same element. It's always going to have the same number of protons in the nucleus. So if it's the same element, it's going to have the same number of protons in the nucleus. Let's say that the atom is uncharged. So it doesn't have an overall charge of any plus one, minus one, or anything like that. If it's uncharged, then the number of electrons is going to be equal to the number of protons. And if we have an atom of the same element, there can be a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. So the protons are always going to be the same, but there can be different number of numbers of neutrons, and it will still be the same element. And these atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons, of course, because they have to, or else they're not the same element. So the atoms of the same element with different numbers of protons, we call those isotopes. And so that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at in this section is radioactive isotopes. Now, we're going to talk about three main forms of radioactive emissions, and then on top of that, one more. So the major types of radioactivity are alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. We're also going to talk about positron emission. And we're going to write nuclear equations to represent these radioactive emissions. Okay, so let's talk about alpha particles first. Now, these are symbolized by the Greek letter alpha. So that's what this is right here. An alpha particle is composed of two protons, and it has two neutrons, and that is the same as a helium nucleus. And so what we usually do is represent it, four is the mass number, two is the atomic number, and then, of course, the elemental symbol for helium. Now, alpha particles have a two plus charge, so this is only a helium nucle nucleus. It does not have its associated electrons. Now, when a radioactive atom emits an alpha particle, the original atom's atomic number decreases by two, okay, because it's going to jettison two protons, and it's also going to decrease the mass number by four, because we're going to lose two protons and two neutrons. So let's look at the emission of an alpha particle from uranium-235 as an example, okay? So here is the, the uh, symbol for this uh, uranium-235. And so you can see the mass number up here, 235. 92 is the atomic number. Notice it's not given here, but we can just go to the periodic table and we can find uranium and we can look at the atomic number and there it is. So we put it there. And then of course the elemental symbol. Now, uh, we are told that uranium decays with by uh, emitting an alpha particle. So um, we're going to write alpha particle as one of the products, okay? And then we have to figure out this other isotope. Now, this is a nuclear equation, and we're going to figure out how to figure out what that is, all right? We're going to talk about that. But this is a nuclear equation, and basically these equations uh, emphasize that the change occurs in the nucleus. So in previous chemistry topics, we've talked about uh, electrons in the electron cloud. But in this, in this section, we're going to be talking about what happens to the nucleus. All right, so how do we know that the product of this reaction is 231 thorium? That's probably the big mystery here. 
And basically, we use the law of conservation of matter. And that says that matter cannot be created or destroyed. So that means we have to have the same number of protons and neutrons on both sides of the nuclear equation. So if our uranium nucleus loses two protons, then that means there are 90 protons remaining. If we go to the periodic table and look at the periodic table, we can find atomic number 90, and then we're going to see that the element is thorium. Now, if we lose four nuclear particles uh, from the original 235 on our mass number, then we're just going to subtract four from that, and we're going to have 231 remaining. So you can see how we ended up with 231 thorium with an atomic number of 90. And let's go ahead and look at our nuclear equation and satisfy ourselves that we do indeed have the same number of neutrons and protons on both sides of the equation. So here is uh, our mass number, 235. If we take 231 plus 4, then we get 235, so that's great. Uh, we have 92 on this side. If we add 2 to 90, then we end up with 92. Um, the uranium-235 isotope is called the parent isotope. So that's always essentially our reactant, the original atom. And the daughter isotope is the product in addition to our alpha particle. And so, um, so we call this product particle, or this product isotope, I should say, the daughter isotope. All right, so let's practice this. So we're going to write the nuclear equation that represents the radioactive decay of radon-222 by alpha particle emission and we're going to identify the daughter isotope. So go ahead and try that, and then we'll walk through the solution to this problem. All right, so radon. Okay, so we're going to find radon on the periodic table, and when we do that, we're going to see that it has an atomic number of 86. So now we have all the information that we need to represent the parent isotope. So 222 is the mass number given, 86 is the atomic number, and then there's the elemental symbol for radon. Now, what we're going to do is, from both of these numbers here, we're going to subtract what um, is given you know, for our alpha particle. So 222 mass number minus 4 for the alpha particle mass number is going to give us 218. And then we're going to take 86. We're going to subtract 2 because it's losing 2 protons. And we're going to get 84. All right, so now we can go to the periodic table with the atomic number 84 and figure out what our daughter isotope actually is. And we find out that 84 corresponds with polonium. So we write down the elemental symbol for polonium and our new mass number after subtracting 4 is 218. So now we know what uh, the daughter isotope is. So we're ready to write the entire equation. So we have radon, 222 mass, and 86 uh, for the atomic number, going to decay by alpha particle, and we're going to end up with 218 polonium as a product. All right, so now let's talk about beta particle emission. And that is symbolized by the Greek letter beta. So you can see this right here. Okay, A beta particle is essentially an electron ejected from the nucleus. Now, I know I just showed a picture where the electrons are in an electron cloud around the nucleus. But, and we're not talking about those electrons. We're talking about an electron that's actually in the nucleus. And that's a beta particle. And basically, these guys have a 1 minus charge. Okay, They're symbolized with an E for an electron. We often do that for electrons. And then the mass number is 0 for these. Now. The net effect of a beta particle emission on a nucleus is that the neutron is converted to a proton. So think about this. If we think about a neutron having an equal number of positive and negative charges because it's going to be overall neutral, if we get rid of one of the negative charges, we're going to end up with an overall positive charge on that, that former neutron, which is going to uh, convert it to a proton. Okay, So that is beta particle emission. So the overall mass number stays the same, but the number of protons increases by one. And when that happens, the atomic number goes up by one, of course, 
And then we go to the periodic table, we look for that new atomic number, and we find out that we have a different element. Now, carbon-14 specifically, um, it decays by emit emitting a beta particle. So let's go ahead and look at this. So here's carbon-14, atomic number 6, 14 is the mass number. And here's our beta particle. And what's going to happen, we've ejected that electron from the nucleus. So now instead of having six protons, we have seven protons. And the mass number overall stays the same. Okay, so you can, you can really think of this. So look, in this case, we have eight neutrons and six protons to get 14 total. Now we're going to have seven protons and seven uh, neutrons. All right, so the third major type of radioactive emission is not a particle at all. It's actually a very energetic form of electromagnetic radiation, and we call those gamma rays. And gamma rays are symbolized by the Greek letter gamma. You can see that right here. Now, they don't carry an overall electrical charge, but they may knock electrons out of atoms in a sample of matter, and that will make it electrically charged. So that's why gamma rays are called ionizing radiation. So they can, they can force other matter to become ionized by knocking electrons out of atoms. Now, uh, as an example, in the radioactive decay of radon-222, both alpha and gamma radiation are emitted. And actually, this happens with lots of nuclear processes where you have gamma radiation emitted at the same time. Um, now, the, the gamma radiation has an energy of 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules per nucleus decayed. Okay, so here is our uh, equation for this process. We already talked about the radon to polonium part of it, and then here's our gamma radiation. Now, this amount of energy may not seem like much, but if a whole mole of radon atoms were to decay, we'd have 4.9 times 10 to the 7 kilojoules. That is a lot of energy. All right, so let's write a nuclear equation that represents the radioactive decay of boron-12 by beta particle emission, and we're going to identify the isotope, the daughter isotope. The gamma ray is emitted simultaneously with the beta particle. Okay, so we're going to write the uh, parent isotope first, okay? So we're told we have boron-12. We're going to go to the periodic table. We're going to find boron, and we're going to see that the atomic number is 5. So now we have everything that we need for our parent symbol. Now, we're told that one of the products is a beta particle. And so we're going to have that as one of the products. And now what we need to do is basically uh, figure out what our uh, daughter isotope is going to be. So um, we know that one of the neutrons is converted to a proton, so going from 5 to six protons, and that mass number stays the same because all we did was convert a neutron to a proton. And so we're going to end up with carbon-12 as our daughter isotope. Now we're also told that the gamma ray is emitted, so I actually should have plus gamma right here. All right, let's talk about positron emission. Now in positron emission, a proton in the unstable nucleus is converted into a neutron. So we're going the other way around, and we're going to emit a positron. And this is a high-energy, positively charged electron. And that's symbolized with 0 for the mass number, beta, and then plus 1. It's also called an anti-electron. So that's another name for it. It has the mass of an electron, but the charge is plus 1 instead of minus 1. Now, the neutron is going to stay in the nucleus, so the number of the protons in the nucleus is decreased by one. The number of neutrons in the nucleus is increased by one, so that means that overall that mass number stays the same. All right, so let's look at radioactive uh, beryllium-7, and it's going to undergo positron emission, so let's write an equation for that. And we can see we have started with beryllium. We went to the periodic table, found the atomic number and the elemental symbol for beryllium. 
and notice that the mass number did not change. The mass number is zero for our positron. And in this case, we converted a proton into a neutron. So we have three neutrons here, four neutrons here. If we want to make sure everything's balanced, we have four on this side, we have three plus one, and that's four on this side. So again, notice that that overall mass number remains the same, but that's because the proton is actually converted to a neutron. Okay, so let's do another example for fluorine 18. Now this is what is used in PET scans and they decay by emitting a positron. So let's write out the parent isotope here. So fluorine 18, we have that information from the problem. We have capital F as our elemental symbol and when we look for fluorine on the periodic table we're going to see that the atomic number is 9. We are told that it emits a positron. Okay, and um, so we know one of the products, we just have to figure out the other product. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and start writing. We know that the mass number needs to be 18 because it's not going to change. We know that, the, that one of the protons is converted to a neutron. So we're going to have one less proton. And when we go to the periodic table for atomic number eight, then we see that that's oxygen. So that's how we could figure out what the daughter isotope is. And again, you can make sure everything's balanced. 18 equals zero plus 18, that sounds great. Nine equals eight plus one.